didn't I called up and got you to tell me what you thought and sure enough it's exactly what I thought what do you think of the New York Times trying to take this out of context and spin it well I you know I haven't really read that and I don't know for sure but yeah if they think I'm ra uh, racist they're totally wrong uh, and if I think uh, I'm again I'm a wondering are they better off under uh, the old system of slavery or are they better off under the uh, welfare slavery that they're under now uh, you know, I'm not saying the one way or the other, but I am wondering. It, it it seems to me like maybe they were happier, and maybe they did have better families, and their family structure was better. And uh, so, you know, that's that's the question in my mind. And well, I, undoubtedly, there as a question. Well, undoubtedly, I'm not endorsing slavery or segregation. They were two uh, Byzantine feudal systems. Sharecroppers run similar systems. But undoubtedly, the statistics of black communities, 20s, 30s, 40s, 90% uh, uh, a legitimacy fathers at home. In fact, I've seen even Harvard's own numbers and Princeton's own numbers. We've done reports on this. Lower crime rates than the white community in the 30s and 40s. Uh, and because it was all about... They're not going to keep us down. We're going to build our own communities. We're going to wear suits and ties. We're going to go to college. We're going to build our own colleges. And the suppression actually made them stronger because they knew they were suppressed. I mean, this is basic warfare information. But it's what I say every day. But when you don't know you're being suppressed, then you absolutely disintegrate. And I remember you saying over and over again, un, unprompted, we can pull up the clips that everyone around the world you believe has a good soul and wants freedom. Uh, you said in every country in the world. So how is that you're saying everybody worldwide wants freedom, uh, but you don't like black people? And I know black people want freedom, and I know that their souls are good. Individually, I know that. And uh, that's what uh, our Constitution was all about, is to be able to, these people to be able to exercise their, their agency, be able to feel free, be able to speak, be able to go and do the things, to be able to experiment and and for sure be able to have good families. That's what our founding fathers want, and I know that's what our heavenly father wants for them. For them and for us, there's no difference between them and us. We're all the same, and our, our heavenly father loves us the same. He gives us the same opportunity, and we are the same. And so there's no prejudice in my mind at all. Well, what, what the controlled media does is they take stuff out of context to demonize folks. But here's your first official statement responding to the New York Times, MSNBC, CNN. Without me interrupting, make your statement of what you really stand for and, and, and why you brought this up. Were you bringing it up as a rhetorical to cause a debate? You know, uh, why this subject was brought up is we had a, a party uh, a gathering here last Friday, and uh, I invited the, the ethical groups, but there's very few of them come. Most of the people that come, were, were a lot of them were from the eastern coast. A lot of them, you know, they were basically uh, white people. So when I got through, I questioned, why aren't you people here? And, uh, and so I expressed sort of some of my feelings here about how I felt about them. And they put them, you know, they made it sound like I was, prejudice. I wasn't prejudiced. I was actually inviting them to the party, and uh, we we're actually going to have another party uh, this this Friday, uh, camp, uh, you know, along the Virgin River. I said, my ranch has a, a swimming pool 30 miles long. Come and enjoy it. And I want these people to come and enjoy it. I don't want just white people coming and enjoy it. I want all races to come and enjoy this public land and uh, see what America's all about. It's a land of beautiful and uh, plenty, and that's to celebrate. That's to celebrate our liberties and freedom, and not only that, let's let the world know that we're not going to let nobody point guns at us again, ever again. Not the United States government, for sure. Cliven, if there was a black farmer or a rancher, say, in Kansas, having the same thing happen to him, now that people came to your aid, would you or your family come to a black farmer's aid? Let me explain something maybe even even closer. Right now, there's a, there's a black man right in my front yard right now in the militia, and he has been protecting my family. He's been coming through my home, eating, my, uh, eating with me and eating with my family, mingling back and forth through my house day and night, and I can't see any anything different about him than any of the other uh, boys that's coming in and out of here. 
we love him and respect him the same as we do anyone else. I think he feels as comfortable as anybody else. And that's 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 the, really the way we're supposed to feel about each other. And it's an example going right on in my home right now. Well, now we get the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. That's what I always point out. The media demonizes the Tea Party and says no minorities are there, even though I go to major libertarian Tea Party events and there's all sorts of people there, black, white, Hispanic, you name it. But then I talk to black friends of mine. They're like, I don't know if I want to go to a Tea Party. Aren't they racist? That's done to keep us apart. So I didn't know that you were complaining that you'd invited black groups there and, and, and other, quote, minority groups, and they weren't there. And you were complaining, saying, man, they're on another form of modern slavery, replacing one evil with another. Uh, and I had no idea. Wow. And, and do you think the New York Times knows they're lying on purpose or spinning no, this? I don't know. You know, we're, we're, I'm in front of the media for a lot of hours every day, and I sure have never indicated that I was prejudiced. I, and like I said, I, I did actually miss the ethnic groups, and I asked, where are you? And, uh, and I, you know, in other words, why would I ask if I wasn't concerned? I want them to be able to enjoy this feeling of freedom and liberty and uh and give them the opportunity to stay. You know what? We ought to offer to fly out C.L. Bryant with Jakari Jackson and Josh Owens if they want to go out there this weekend to that party. So, uh, you know, maybe we should send C.L. Bryant out there and uh, you can get a chance to meet him and talk to him because he makes a lot of the same points that we've replaced one form of slavery with another. And, and that was basically the plan. But all of us are going into this Cloward and Piven bankrupted sharecropper economy. That's what this is all about, is they want to make us dependent. They want to get us off the land. They want to run everybody off the land. You're the last people standing. Uh, finally, uh, have you been served with any papers? What's coming next? <laughs> well, I, you know, I've told you that uh, probably for almost a week now, I've had some certified letters. Uh, I have never opened them. I just put them back. we got a lot more important things to worry about those legal papers. Uh, but... Whether I'm served there, I don't know. Nobody's actually been to my porch and served me with anything yet. Uh, now, uh, first you guys reported they killed two of your prize bulls. The BLM denied that. A week later, they admitted, no, we killed them. Said they were dangerous. Big pools of blood. Shot them. And then we now learn that you found a mass grave of more dead cows that they shot. Uh, and, and the BLM admitted that two days ago. Uh, they didn't have a court order to kill your cows or destroy uh, your water cisterns or pipes. How large was the damage by the federal rustlers? Well, we're still assessing that. You know, we're so busy trying to take care of just ranch duties here. We haven't really been able to get out and assess and, and even find all the mass graves. Uh, what we have done is try to just make uh, secure for us, giving them water and feed enough to get by. And so we're still in sort of a getting by type uh, mode here, not really the mode, mode yet. So that we, there's there's da damage, and I, I have animals that basically are wounded. You know, they're sick, and they're, they're trying to heal, and I've got a lot of that type of thing. Another thing people don't understand is this uh, desert range here is rocky. It's all gravel and rock. And when you chase these cattle across this land for miles on, in helicopters and, and uh, horses, are, it wears their hooves off, and these, these cattle are all sore-footed, so they can't go back to their natural habitat and live because now their, their shoes are wore out. And they, they can't walk on the rocks and the cactus and all the things like they could in a normal life cycle. So if they're, they're basically sore-footed. Just the same thing. The reason why people put horseshoes on their horses is so their feet don't get sore. Well, the cow is like a fingernail. Their cow's fingernail grows, and it protects their hoof to where they can move around and forage and, and make a living. When their fingernail is wore off the quick, they can't, they can't work no more. They can't travel, and this type of problem is going on. All right. Well, uh, sir, we really appreciate you coming on and giving us the first uh, breaking report on where you really stand. Uh, and I'm going to read you the quote one more time and tell me what you think of it to, to, to tell me if it's accurate so we can get that to the White House media uh, operations so they can correct themselves, MSNBC, CNN, uh, Media Matters, and the New York Times. Uh, and it goes on. Uh, Here's your quote. And in front of that government house, that door was usually open. An older 
people and the kids, and there's always at least half a dozen people sitting on a porch. They didn't have nothing to do. Speaking of uh, projects you saw in Las Vegas, they abort their young children, which I know they're upset you're trying to stop them from killing their kids. It's because you're racist. You want blacks not to be dead because you're racist. They abort their young children. They put their young men in jail. Yeah, you don't like all the blacks being in jail, more racism, because they never learned how to pick cotton. And I've often wondered, are they better off as slaves picking cotton and having a family life and doing things, or are they better off under government subsidy? They didn't get no more freedom. They got less freedom. And then I said, do you mean, you know, what do you mean by that? He said, well, they got a new form of slavery for old, which is just the classic statement that I've heard a thousand times, literally. Uh, are those quotes accurate? Because you told me that, that, that that's not exactly what you said. No, that's not exactly what I'm said. But I said, but you know, if you add, I'm wondering if this is uh, what the situation is. They're better off, and you, you, they would probably be fairly correct. But no, I didn't say it in that way. I said, I did say, they're aborting. The young women are aborting their their babies, and the the young men are in jail, and the older. Uh, uh, women and children are sitting on the in front of their houses in the sidewalk, and I'm talking about government uh, subsidy houses. And and our the other picture is when they was back in the South, they were they were in the front of their porch as a family unit, and they and their they had chickens and gardens to take care of, and their their men were out working. I didn't have to say nothing about picking cotton, but they were out working. And we're, uh, it seemed to me like their family and unit and their happiness was greater there than it is here in the city in a, in a government subsidy home. Wow, it's sir, i got to stop you. This is bombshell. This is bombshell. The New York Times just got caught with Photoshopped Russian soldiers attacking people, and they had to admit it was Photoshopped and fake. They had to retract today. You're telling me you did not say picking cotton. No, I did not say picking cotton. Unbelievable, because they uh, th that is just amazing. Uh, wow, anything else from those quotes that's inaccurate? Well, the main thing is I, uh, the family unit thing. You know what I'm talking about? They were happy as a family then, and uh, their family out in the, in these sub government subsidies or this government welfare or this government slavery, however you want to put it, those people don't seem to be happy. Well, they're not as strong as they were, and nobody is. We're being literally domesticated. Well, Clive and Bundy, um, would you like the New York Times to retract then and, and, and take your actual statements that we have audio of live and uh, correct their story? I would appreciate that. I think they should do that, and especially if they make it a, ra a racist-type thing, because I'm not racist. You, I've explained that to you, and, uh, and like I said, right, I'll repeat that. I could probably go right out of this room right now and find that black man and give him, have him give me a statement here within a few minutes. If he's, but anyway, he's been in and out of my home. I have no, there's no difference to him than anybody else, and I think he feels welcome as anybody else. Well, absolutely. You know, I know you've got another interview to do, but if you'd like us to call back in an hour or so and get uh, you know his name and information, why don't you do that? And I'll have him see if I can get, find him here and. Uh, uh, he could make a statement to you. That would be good. Absolutely. I'll call your wife back, Mrs. Uh, Bundy, uh, and uh, we will uh, get him on anytime he wants to in the next two hours, sir. Okay. Hey, thank you. God bless you, Mr. Bundy. You bet. Bye-bye. Thank you. I knew what I was going to get when I called him. I said, what does this mean? He goes, I didn't really say all that. That's wrong. I meant it's one evil for another. Government slavery. Because that's all conservatives ever talk about. I mean, it's just I've heard it literally a thousand times from black conservatives on this show. But again, that's how they do it. And they go find, uh, you know, a rural hayseed who might have been from 100 years ago will just straight shoot you. I mean, all he talks about is everybody's got good souls on the whole earth and it's all love. And I can just hear him. And where are the minorities here? We need them here. But you know, they're in government slavery. That turns into racism. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable how they spin everything, ladies and gentlemen. They know what they're doing. And then when you're truthful, they take it and spin it. We're going to be back with what could turn into regional war, you name it. But how dare Clive and Bundy? He should want to kill every black baby out there. Then he'd be liberal. How dare him? We're on the march. The Empire.